Welcome to Product One's YouTube series. My name is Tulani Mazibugo and today we are going to be looking at uh, MathCAD and Excel working together so that you get the best of both worlds. Um, so the reason why uh, this is important is because of a, a, a huge number of customers out there, they've got data, legacy data that is stuck in Excel. And the reason why Excel is so pervasive uh, within the engineering space is because it's free. It comes with the Microsoft uh, suite of products. And after you do a calculation inside the Excel spreadsheet, you don't have to save it as something else. You can just send it and share it with an individual. The drawbacks though are, it's not unit sensitive and it's a little bit ambiguous when you try and look at the equations utilized in there and it's dependent on that recipient or the person to be efficient user of that particular worksheet. If it falls into the wrong hands, somebody can make mistakes and you can lose a huge amount of money or company IP. So I think a little bit of a background is that Excel was originally designed for data capturing and manipulation, utilizing a structure of rows and columns and it was mainly focused on accounting and financial purposes. And of course, over time, they did add a couple of features and so forth. And that's why you found a lot of engineers gravitating towards utilizing Excel. Okay, so now what do you do when you now have MathCAD and you still want to utilize the data that is stuck in Excel? So if I'm a user, I can read an Excel document by just simply browsing to where it's located and I can select that document. And if I were to evaluate the variable data, I get to see exact, I'll call it, entities that are coming from Excel. That's one way of doing it. Okay? So, if you don't want uh, to utilize that methodology, you can utilize what we call an Excel component. This is where you have a flat sheet of, of Excel. Just want to maybe browse this and put it here so that you see everything in real time. So if it does happen that I've got a data that comes from another Excel sheet, I can paste that data in here and by pasting it that data it becomes embedded in MathCAD. When I format that table it changes inside MathCAD as well. If I happen to make any sort of modification be it to center the values and so forth all that happens inside MathCAD as well. Now the benefits of MathCAD is it's unit handling capabilities. So if I were to now take this particular column, which is a density, I can define a density here by utilizing a formula for density or sorry, rather a symbol for density. And I can extrapolate data from Excel and say data from B2 to B6. So that's the data that I want. And when I want to include the units, I just do it this way. So let's say that's the unit. If I were to evaluate now that density, this is the value that I'm having. Okay, so I could do exactly the same with all the other variables, but in the interest of time, I think one is enough. But if I wanted to use one of these values for calculation, so if I wanted to take this value and that value and this one and do a calculation, I can do that. So I have a couple of other options as well. I can state the origin of my matrix to be one, because if I don't do that, it starts counting this at zero, one, two, and so forth. So I can now extrapolate data 
uh, from a row and I can specify what the number of that particular row. And if you can see there, I've just taken data precisely from row two and it's what's reflected here. Okay, so the reason why I would do an exercise like this is because you can sort of take the same concept for something as complicated as this. What you see there is a beam selection or beam calculation sheet. And I'm having now a variable that I've defined and I'm having a function that matches. If we can look here closely, what we have there is what we call the beam ID, which is represented by this here, that particular value. And all these items, be it the mass, the width, the web, uh, the radiuses and so forth, all of these, they come directly from that beam ID. So if we were to say, what is, for an example, the radius of this is 16.5, which is showcased there. The same applies with the D value, there it is. So all these values are automatically populated, the beam properties are automatically populated from this. So let me make this slightly smaller so we can see a, a, a full view of this. So apart from this, there is my loading condition my force balance equations. So I've done a video uh, previously showcasing this and the shear force and bending moment diagram. However, the key area of interest is obviously the beam deflection, where I'm calculating the beam deflection at a load. And this is currently the value that I'm having, this one here. So then I specify a couple of conditional statements to say if the height exceeds or it's less than a particular value or whatever the case is, it must say it fails or else it must, must pass. The same applies with the width and the maximum defined deflection for me is this here. So I can even do a math formatting as far as this is concerned where I select a particular item and change color of that. Okay, so let's do that quickly. Not everything, of course, just this one entity. All right. So that is the maximum beam deflection and the value is that. And by the virtue of those conditional statements, it actually fails. So what happens if I were to pick a different beam altogether? So let's pick the very first beam ID. So it's 421388. So I'm just going to scroll down a bit before I say enter so that you have a look at the display on the actual image and on the beam properties immediately when I say enter. Those values, all of them, they update. And if we can look, we've now got the value for B, H and so forth, and they directly correlate to what we're currently having here including that 799, which is the D value. And of course, the calculation will update, including the respective graphs. And what's important is that for this particular scenario, I now have a value that is way less than two. And because of that, it says pass. So I've literally utilized an Excel component there, utilize a conditional formatting that is inside Excel for this effect as well. Okay. So now the other thing that one can do with uh, MathCAD is the following. If I were to take a 3D graph, so we did put out a video a long time ago showcasing that inside MathCAD, you can have a 3D graph. So this could be a mathematical model of an object or a design or a concept. And you can take that and create an actual geometry from this. So case in point, I'm having here, I'm having 
a folder called uh, Bob and there's nothing in there. However, if I were to write, so let's give this SOS, we define SOX as a function of DXF. And what I'm going to do is specify the path and give this a name. So let's call it Zulu.DXF. All right. And then what I'm going to do is specify the defining functions that I've already got here in the interest of time. And just like that, inside this particular folder, there's now a DXF called Zulu. Now, the impressive part with this is I can now take the geometry inside Zulu into our 3D design solution, which is Creo Parametric. If I say, OK, I'm now having data, a model that is driven by MathCAD or that comes directly from MathCAD. Of course, it's a faceted geometry, but you can make this now a smooth surface and so forth. You don't have to stop on DXF, so you can write other formats as well. So let's quickly get something like this. So I can take this particular geometry and say, how about we call it, let's call it Mike. And we're going to write now a different format. Let's call this format, let's make it an STL. And of course, we define the path where the geometry is going to sit. And then let's take a unique name. Let's say Tswana and STL. So now I'm going to finish off by defining those particular functions. And if I go back, there's now an STL file called Tswana. And of course, to open this inside my program, I just simply drag it and there you go. There is your model. I can change this. I can change the environment, the scenery. I can say, let's make it Chrome, put it in an environment like this, even change the scenery to have an object that looks like this. I can even render this if I need to put it in the middle of the street or whatever the case is. So this could be anything. It could be a solar car or a fuselage or an aeroplane, uh, an airplane. It, it, it doesn't actually matter. So you don't have to obviously put on colors and so forth because you can do something as unique as this. So what I'm having here is a math kit and this is not a 3D graph, it's just a 2D uh, polar plot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take, uh, let's say, let's give it the name Rob for instance. Then we're going to write, let's write it as a DXF. And this time around, uh, let's call it DX, I don't know, DX dot DXF and something a little bit more unique here is that I'm going to include the color scheme that's already defined in here. So all those functions that I'm running, they are here. So once I'm done with this, there should be a DX DXF file inside this folder and there it is. Now let's have a look what will happen when I open that particular um, geometry. So I can say I want this to open. And just like that, there is a surface with the color scheme that comes directly from MathCAD. And that is the power of MathCAD when it comes to integrating with other solutions, be it Excel or be it uh, Creo Parametric. So don't forget to subscribe, like the video, leave comments at the bottom. Until next time, that's it for me.